Thank you for joining us again on Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas YouTube channel. Last night we interviewed Nick Williams of Murfreesboro who found a 4.73 carat, they call it a white diamond. Uh, I took still photos of it last night because you couldn't see it in the interview very well in my hand. Um, so now I've got, this is almost like looking through a microscope. I've got 21 pictures I want to show you and we'll look at it up close. Now, the first thing you might say is, is this a diamond? Yes, it is. Is it a pretty diamond? No, it's not. Um, not all the girls in the school are, are uh, lovely, but, uh, but it, it has a lot of personality. So she's not very pretty, but she's got a good personality. It, it is a very interesting mineral specimen, and it is very large. It's the largest diamond found at the Crater of Diamond State Park in the last three years. So uh, let's look at it, and I'll talk about it a little bit. First thing you might ask by looking at this first picture is, why did the state park call it white? Well, I think it's a clear diamond with a lot of inclusions in it and a lot of things going on. The black you see is graphite. So a diamond is 100% carbon. Well, graphite is 100% carbon too, and that's like the lead in your pencil, graphite. That is not diamond because it did not develop into the hard diamond material. It's a so soft carbon material, graphite. And the black in here is graphite, and the rest, I would have called this diamond a brown, but they didn't. I can see why it, it's a little troubling to know how to name it. <clears throat> but let's go on and look at some other views of it. It almost looks like I've got different pictures of different diamonds um, from a different angle here. Notice the nose that is looking at you. It's kind of a point, not a sharp point, but you can see natural facets in it and there's kind of, uh, I'll use the pointer here a little bit, there's almost a scar on the nose. Okay, so this is what I'm calling the nose. And this diamond, in my opinion, has four noses. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And um, then it's missing a piece in the back, and you can't tell it from this angle. But this nose has a scar on it, so uh, very identifiable. You, wouldn't, you could pick it out in a police lineup. Now, this is a pretty good angle. This is a pretty nice-looking diamond from here. Got a lot of character. Got a lot of personality. Uh, look at the color and how it goes around here. Some people would say, well, this is beautiful, but I've seen diamonds that really are beautiful. But this has its pretty qualities. Look at this shape. This is how you can tell it's a diamond. See these natural faces on it? This is the classic diamond shape. And over here, this is almost an octahedron, or used to be. And an octahedron is two four-sided pyramids joined base to base. Uh, octa meaning eight, that would make eight faces on it. Well, this has been somewhat resorbed and rounded, so you don't have the sharp faces. But I can see, without a lot of imagination, that this you know could have been a octahedron. It weighs 4.73 carats now. I think originally it might have weighed almost eight carats, but a chunk is missing from the back, and we'll see that in, in future pictures. But let's go ahead and just go through and look at it. Now see, it looks like I've got a different specimen here because I positioned it differently, and it's got a lot of personality. It's got a different personality from, from this way. You could say, this is the nose of a tiger and the tiger eye and the tiger ear. I don't know if you see animals. Almost like a Rorschach test. You know, you see different things in it, uh, ink blots. Um, this is almost a smile on the uh, tiger. It, uh, this is a crack in it, and we'll see it again later. And uh, because of these natural cracks, it can allow this graphite to get back in there and stain it. And it could be cleaned with acid and uh, change the appearance some. Now, isn't that interesting? You wouldn't even think that was the same diamond, but it's just turned differently. And um, it, it has a lot of color. I, it's kind of a golden. Um, it's a light brown or a yellowish brown. It's just interesting how this diamond handles light. Um, here's another angle of it, and you can see 
this nose sticking out here. This is not the nose with the scar, but you can see the cracking along here. And uh, this is one of the noses, and this is one of the noses, and this is one. So uh, that, that's an interesting mineral specimen from there. Somebody really ought to put this in their mineral collection. It's not a jewelry piece. Well, you could put it in jewelry and wear it, and it's large, and people would see it. <clears throat> to me, this is a good as a mineral specimen. Somebody who collects minerals from all around the world needs a USA diamond in their collection. And you probably wonder, well, how big is this? Because, you know, it looks huge on the screen. Well, I put it next to a quarter for size comparison. And you can see this is black graphite in the diamond. But it's kind of yellowish or brownish or kind of almost a bronzy, brassy look. Uh, very, really a, a very interesting color. Anyway, next to a quarter, you know how big a... 4.73 karat diamond is another position next to the quarter and and this nose here looks pretty yellow um, or, or, or faint you know tea color or something but uh, it's got a good luster if you'll notice the way the light hits it it has not been polished or cut or anything done with it it hadn't been cleaned it's just it looked this way the day he found it there's another one next to the quarter not too much different from the last picture but a uh, little bit different angle and you can just see and appreciate and it's sitting on white paper and it's reflecting some of the the white off of the paper is uh, on this so it makes it look cloudy but that's just because it's so lustrous that the white it's reflecting like a mirror the white off of the paper <clears throat> there's another view of this interesting specimen. There's a lot going on in there. If you've ever looked in a kaleidoscope, that's kind of what this reminds me of. There's a lot a lot happening there. And, and that's a different angle. Uh, interesting. And here again is the cracks that allow some of this graphite to, to leach into it. But this is a pretty nose. I, I like these natural faces in it. You could draw a contour drawing of these lines here if you were an artist. And then this is another nose over here and here. Um, I don't know. It looks pretty good. It's an interesting, interesting diamond. Right, we'll go on and look at some more. Okay, now you can kind of see where this chunk is missing out of the side here. See why I say it used, it's, it's incomplete. Uh, a big chunk of it cracked off, and it was probably, I would think, during the intrusion when the volcanic material came up molten hot at about speed of Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, and it hit the cold waters of a shallow sea, and hot and cold mixing with that, this diamond could just shatter like glass. And uh, it it fractured along a weak point. There might have been you know, a crack in there or graphite grown in there and that made a weak spot that allowed it to crack there. But uh, still, interesting mineral specimen. And then look, this, you can see right through, this is very clear. You can see all the way to the paper right through there. That is a very clear part of the diamond. And then you've got this other interesting stuff going on and it's almost like there's another color here. It's almost like a tricolor diamond. You know, it's like you've got yellow over here and white here. Maybe that's why they called it a white diamond. And almost a beige going on. And then you've got these black streaks. And uh, uh, it, this is just interesting to me. Fascinating. You kind of wonder the history of its life. You know, how it, it got like that. And... Uh, so that could be presented well. It just depends how you turn it and set it up. I took a lot of photos because you don't know what you're getting. Now, this one shows the Certificate of Authenticity issued by the Crater Diamond State Park the day he found it, which was September 13th of 2019. It shows it weighs 4.73 carats, 
and they called the color white. Um, and then the man's name, you know, Nick Williams is on there, Nicholas Williams. And <clears throat> if you ever find a diamond at the crater, keep this card because it shows it's a genuine USA diamonds and, and USA diamonds are rare, especially one that's about four and three quarter carats is very rare. So part of the value of this diamond is the documentation showing where it was found because a mineral collector would pay more for a USA diamond in his collection than he would for a South African diamond simply because supply and demand. There are a lot of South African diamonds because they mine them with machinery, but these that are hand dug, hand washed, hand separated are uh, more rare and especially one this size from this location is rare. So um, also they've been embossing these. I don't know if you can see, but there is a, a seal that goes around here and look, there's a diamond shape in it too. So they emboss these cards so they can't be forged and faked. Uh, so that that's a, the real deal right there. Now this is the final picture. I couldn't get the diamond to sit exactly the way I wanted to on the paper. It wanted to roll, you know, to one side or the other. So I asked Nick to put it on his hand right between his fingers. And then I was able to turn it. So I thought, you know, that's kind of interesting to be able to look at it like this. This has a good nose here and here and here and here. That's the four noses. And then the broken part on the, you know, backside is, is down under there. But, uh, Anyway, I'm glad you uh, took the time to go through and look at these photos of this uh, very unique and large USA diamond. Um, it's called the Blind Luck Diamond. And if you didn't see last night's episode, you really ought to watch it where I interview Nick and he tells an amazing story of how he was not even looking for a diamond and found this one. So... Um, Great diamond, great story. It is for sale. If you want to contact me, I'll put you in touch with Nick. And uh, uh, he does want to find a home for it. He's had it for several months now and um, ready to just uh, find a good home for it. Hopefully with a mineral collector that could appreciate it and doesn't have a large USA diamond in their collection. So thank you for joining us again. And um, we'll, we'll have more interesting programs in the future if you check back with us.